Hey folks, hope you're all doing very well and I am back for a new lesson. Today we are going to talk about the container. We've talked about it a little bit in the past, but I want to dive down a little bit further this time. Before we begin the lesson, I just want to let you know that TDD with Laravel, my course, is available on early release and you can check out the link on the description. We already have more than two, more than three hours of content and I still have a bunch to add it and record. So it's it's looking great. I suggest you check that out. But anyway, into the lesson. I have a fresh installation of Laravel here and we are going to take a look at two classes, the Illuminate Container Container and Illuminate Foundation Application, which extends the container class. I think that the container is the base of Laravel. Everything resolves around the container. And a good way to think of the container is basically a huge array that deals with several classes. This is what we call a dependency injection container or any version of control container. And if you don't know what dependency injection is, I have a video on my channel, check that out. But it's basically, you're giving control of the application to the container. So in the past, you would usually instantiate a new class yourself, a new object yourself. Instead, you can use the container to do that for you. You use the container to do things for you. You must be aware that Laravel has several classes. So you have um, cache drivers, you have notifications drivers, you have the bus, you have several things. If we take a look right here, let me show it to you guys. If we just go through the folders, you can see that we have a bunch of stuff. We have broadcasting, we have the bus, we have cache, we have the console, database, we have lots of classes. And the entity that manages all of those classes in Laravel is the container. So the container is responsible for instantiating all of those classes and giving you the proper objects. For instance, if you've worked with Laravel in the past, um, you've probably done something like this, but inside a controller. So let's say, let's create a controller right here. Let's say post controller. Oh, let's do it. And you've probably done something like um, show and actually let's say index um, post post. And then you, you do like return a view post index and pass the post and you could do something like you you might have done you might have done something like this so you might not really be aware what you're doing or instead you could have done this in the construct method so you could do um, protective post and you could type hint it here you might have done something like this in the past and you might not know what's going on behind the scenes and i say this because when i first started working with laravel I didn't quite know what was going on behind the scenes as well, but you are type hinting in a class right here. So how do you get an instance of post just by type hinting it? You're not passing any arguments to the post controller. And the magic, what's happening behind the scenes is that the container is fetching this dependency for you. We've talked about this in the dependency injection lesson, but just to give you guys a quick summary, basically on almost all of the classes, the Laravel handles. So this controller is handled by Laravel. In basically all of those classes, every class that Laravel instantiates for you, it usually uses the container to fetch the dependence that you want. So you you said that you wanted a post here, but Laravel is going to check and say, hey, there's no post here. We, we didn't receive this argument, this dependency and it will try and fetch this class for you. If it's not able to fetch the class, it is going to throw an exception. But that's what's happening behind the scenes. When you do this, when you do a constructor injection, you're telling the container to fetch this dependency for you, unless you pass it. But in this case, you're not passing it because you're not responsible for instantiating the controllers. But this is just, you know, the tip of the iceberg. This doesn't reflect the container abilities at all. So, like I said, Laravel has many classes and all of them are managed by the container. If we go here and start a tinker section and we can just run app and this is just a helper function. So if we, let's go to the file. If we go to helpers, it just returns the instance of the container. The container is always a singleton. So you only have one instance of the container. It's always cached. That means that you always get the same instance and therefore you can store things in the container in different places. So you can see we have an argument called abstract. 
And if we pass that, it is going to not only instantiate the container, so it gets the container right here, but it's also going to tell the container to fetch a dependency for us. And if we go here and type, for instance, we got the container and we type make cache, you can see that we get the cache manager class. There are many other classes that we can fetch through the container, and here's the deal. When you pass a class that the container hasn't fetched yet, like you do on this controller, so you're passing this post model, which we don't have, but let's just um, pretend we have. The container is going to be, okay, I don't have this dependence with me right now, let me try and fetch it. But Laravel registers its components manually, so everything is registered on the container already. It's not fetching it as we go. You've probably worked with facades in the past. And let me show you guys something. If we go to, let's go to the bus facade. And if we go to the get facade accessory method, you can see that it returns a string. And it's just the namespace of a class, the bus dispatcher contract, which is this class right here. And what this method does in every facade, so if we go to another facade, let's go to, let's say, um, we can go to the off facade. You can see that the get facade assessor always returns a string. Sometimes it's a string like off, and sometimes it's actually the fully qualified namespace for a class. And the reason it does this is because facades depend on the container. This method simply refers to the name, to the um, it's, name's not what I want to use, but it simply refers to how this class is registered on the container. If we go to Tinker and we type app make auth, you see that we get the auth manager. And this is what this method does. Whenever you have a facade, it's the container who's fetching the dependency. In this case, we're just telling, okay, so whenever someone uses the auth facade, you're going to fetch auth inside the container. Let me show you another one. So if we go, let's see one that we use constantly. The, I've already talked about cache. Let's see, let's use redirect. So if we go here, you can see that we also have a simple string here. And if we do app, or we just, we don't really have to use the make method. We can just pass it as an argument and we say redirect we get an instance of the redirector. And that's what happens when you use facades. They rely on the container to fetch instances for you. Now, this is also not all of the possibilities of the container. And I really, really suggest that you check out the documentation. But let me talk about a few useful things. The first one is that the container allows you to basically swap any class that Laravel uses. So you have this class, but let's say you don't really want to use it. You want to use your own implementation you can do it because you can swap instances on the container. So you have the cache manager, you have the auth manager, right? And it implements a contract, implements the auth factory contract. You can create a class that also implements a contract and you can simply use your own manager. If we go to this class auth service provider, you're going to see where this is actually registered. So we have this method, register authenticator. And you can see when we call this app, we are talking about the container. We are talking about the application class, which I've shown you guys here. And we're calling this method singleton. Now take a look at this. So we're telling that whenever the user or the application requests this dependency, the auth dependency, we are going to return this. And we're also going to set this. If this doesn't make sense to you, this is a singleton. And we have two ways of registering dependencies on the container. We have actually more, but those are the two main ways. You can simply tell the container what to, to return when you ask for a dependency. For instance, let's create a dummy class. Let's say dummy and namespace app class dummy foo returns bar. Okay, cool. If I were to go to my app service provider and I could say this app and I'm going to use the bind method. So whenever we request this dummy instance, we are going to return a new instance of dummy, that class we created. If I go to Tinker, let me refresh it and do app dummy. 
you can see that we get an instance of dummy. But you can see that we are getting different instances. Take a look at this number. Whenever I request dummy, I get a new instance of dummy. So with bind, we can tell the container what to return when we request something. In this case, we are requesting dummy. A single to simply means that the container is going to cache this. So we are only going to get one instance of dummy. Facades are singletons. You only get a single instance of a facade. If you return it several times, you are going to get the same instance always. If I were to change this for singleton, and let me run this again, and I ask for dummy, okay, 3247, 3247, 3247. You always get the same instance. And this is what's happening right here. We are telling the container that we are going to register this auth dependency, and it's always going to return the same instance of auth manager. And it also registers a few other dependencies. So this is where Laravel registered their dependencies. And Laravel basically relies on contracts. If you take a look at this, it might seem a little bit complicated at first, but what? remember that on the container we are always talking about strings. So when I say authenticatable contract class, I'm actually talking about this fully qualified namespace. This is what's going to be returned. What it's saying is, whenever the container, whenever someone asks the container for this dependency, it is going to return this, right? And remember that when we say off, we are talking about this dependency. So if I were to go here and say, let's copy this fully qualified namespace. So let's say class like this, and you can see that we get a string and we do a class, we get no, but it's calling this. This is what this instance refers to. This may might have sounded confusing, but it's not really confusing. So I'm just saying that the, <laughs> the container relies on strings. So each dependency is a string. And you can this you don't have to pass a class name. You can pass anything. For instance, on our dummy class, I could just pass this. And if I go to the container and I type dummy, it's not going to find anything. But if I type this, it is going to find it. Now. Take a look at something interesting. If I do app models user, it fetches an instance of user. But if I were to tell the container that whenever the user requests an instance of user, whenever someone requests it, we are going to return a dummy. So take a look at this. We are getting a dummy. And that's the beauty of resolving instances through the container. You can override things. Of course, this could be a pain in the ass too, but it's usually not. So let's get rid of this and just say dummy. Okay. So this is the easiest way to use a container. You can bind things on it. And if I were to get rid of this, we can also make the container fetch dummy for us. If I were to do app and passing the fully qualified namespace, the container is going to fetch it for us. And we don't have a dependency here, but if I were to have one, take a look at this. So let me add this and let's type hint it. So we expect a user. If I were to go and say new app dummy, it's going to fail because we didn't pass all the arguments that we needed. But if I make the container resolve it for me, it's going to give me an instance of dummy. Let me make this public. So just so you guys can see it. You see that we have an instance of user. So yeah, that's pretty much the basics of the container. Um, you are mostly going to use the bind and the singleton method. And remember the facades rely on the container. So whenever you create a custom facade, you are using the container. Um, and they are always singletons. Remember that facades are always singletons. And that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about. I hope you guys learned something from this. If you go and take a look at the documentation, you have several other things. You have something very interesting and that is contextual binding. So let's take at the syntax. The API is really simple. So when the photo controller class needs a file system, it is going to give it this. And when a video controller and upload controller need a file system, it's going to give it another disk. So you can always type hand this class, 
But on the photo controller, the container is going to give you this. And on the video controller and the upload controller, the container is going to give you something else. And you also have binding primitives and all of that. But yeah, you should definitely take a look at the documentation. You can do really, really cool stuff with the container. And it's basically the, the whole core of Laravel. So I hope you guys learned something from this video. And I see you in the next one. Bye-bye.